Hi, and thank you so much for tuning in today. So today's video is basically um, just sharing with you some different tools that I might not have caught in a previous video. <coughs> Excuse me. That I haven't caught in a previous video that I think is very beneficial um, in soap making and maybe it's something that you will be able to incorporate in your soap making adventures but I did definitely think that it would be beneficial so without further ado let's begin so the previous video talked about the different containers that we used in soap making This is an infrared thermometer to be able to gauge the temperature. I find this device most beneficial because it allows you to be at a distance gauging temperature because it's infrared and wherever the red um, dot lands, it's going to gauge that temperature. So if I wanted to find out what the temperature in my home is right now, I could easily say, oh, it's 76 degrees. An infrared thermometer, preferably. This, uh, this one I got from Walmart. Walmart does sell these. So does Home Depot and Lowe's or online. I'll leave a link in the description box below. These containers from Home Depot and Lowe's, the HDX containers, you get them in the paint department, works beautifully for the live water solution. Always, either the Pyrex or the Anchor glass containers like this, the measuring, they work well for measuring and um, mixing your live water solution. And even a pitcher. I like this because it's tall and I can stir with a long utensil. So this is a one gallon um, pitcher that I'm able to use unbelievably because it's made from, I think PP, it's PP5 on here. It can, it, the, the heat doesn't mess with this type of plastic. So I'm able to get away with using even, using even this container. That's for mixing, all of those containers were for mixing the lye water solution. Okay, so we got that out the way. Another um, tool that you might consider having is a uh, coffee grinder. I found this one, if I remember correctly, it was it was at either a thrift shop or a, a garage sale or one of these type of stores. I didn't buy this brand new. Um, I want to say it was Habitat for Humanity, but I could be mistaken right now. This is a very good investment for me because when I want to incorporate um, a, a powdered form of an ingredient as an additive to my soap, then I can easily plug this in. There's a little toggle here that grinds whatever's inside this cup container and it makes it into a powder form. So I'm talking everything from seeds, almonds, just so many different varieties that you can incorporate as an additive into your soaps. Um, seeds work very well, coffee uh, beans work very well, obviously. Oats, um, steel cut oats, regular oats like um, Quaker oats works well. Um, lavender, rosemary, anything in an herbal form that's dried, you can pass through this little blender and it will pulverize it to a powder even. So this was a very good device to have um, found and invested in. Wasn't that expensive at all. The next thing um, we're gonna talk about are spatulas. Spatulas are absolutely a must have. You can't just go around with a whisk or a spoon. A spatula, especially a silicone spatula like these, um, they make your life a whole lot easier when mixing soaps. And you wanna have a great variety. I don't know how many I have because I've, um, I've purchased over time a, a, a quite a few of them. So every time um, I would notice that I'm using more colors or more batches are being made of soap, I'd have to run downstairs and bring it upstairs or I'd have to um, take it out of the kitchen and bring it into this area, my soap area. So that would afford me, I'll pick up a couple of spatulas from Walmart. And so over time, what I've had in my kitchen has been repurposed into the soap shop and I've just replaced the ones in the kitchen so that I'm not ever using these back in the kitchen again. Um, so you can have, and the idea is that if you're having to, um, if your project consists of four different colors, then you want minimally four spatulas 
and one extra one because you never know what will happen. Just have an extra one on you can always have. And this way, you know, each container has its own spoon. If you realize that something, um, like for example, if um, if the fragrance oil is accelerating the, the thickness of your batter, you know, and you realize that because you're working your soaps, then you can go to each soap, each container and mix and not wonder like, oh, I have to wipe this one off. I need to wipe this one off. No, you can be prepared. So invest in, to begin with, at least three. Begin with at least three, minimally. All right, the lighting may be a bit darker right now. So, but the next tool that I wanna to talk to you about is this ice cream scoop. Now, when I purchased it, it did come in a double pack. This is great for using and scooping your solid bubble bath or even the bubble bar um, recipe if you venture into that. Um, it kind of gives you that ice cream scoop appearance because it's kind of ragged along the circumference, like the rounded part, it's kind of ragged, but it looks really neat, really cute, and what it is is a solid, it's a solid bubble bath. So an ice cream scoop, and I have this size, and I have the smaller, I'm sorry, the smaller size, and this I like to consider like a truffle. Um, it makes a smaller one, so you can package them four or five in a pack and it makes like a little um fills your bathtub with bubbles and kids love it so ice cream scoops are not a bad tool to have in your soap shop also um let's talk about mixers so to mix the soap base recipe um or to mix your cold process soap and sometimes in your hot process you can use this in the um you can use this in the crock pot if you're doing hot process soaps you're going to need good, powerful blenders, mixers, stick blenders. Um, not sure what you call it, but I call it a stick blender. I bought this one from Walmart. It's the Bella. Um, this is the second one that I've gone through. This is um, a newer one. I actually went through one of these already. And when I did, unbeknownst to me, um, I received this one as a gift from my sister and this one is a KitchenAid so I'm curious to see how long this one will last versus the one that I bought from Walmart and I think this one is so beautiful it's like a soft lavender really soft lilac color it's so pretty but it's a KitchenAid I haven't used this one yet I'm almost hesitant this is going to be for like um when I'm working with someone special for a special occasion like a wedding or baby shower, I like to go extra special for those types of jobs and you want to use the best that you have because um, it's a very, very special occasion for them. Everyone's special. All of these tools are very beautiful and they all perform well. But there are some instances where <laughs> you really want to be inspired not to mess up anything, right? Another mixer, I bought this one from Brambleberry. I actually have two of these because I thought I burned this one, but no, it, it wasn't burned. I just needed to change the battery out. It's a mini mixer, and this is good for mixing your um, colorants or even when you're um, making a blend of the different es uh, essential oils or even the fragrance oils. You have something that can mix and submerge into like a smaller mixing container like this one for example the container I use for mixing my fragrance oils and so it's small enough that I can submerge something to really mix it very well to get it fully incorporated so a mini mixer Brambleberry sells these if I can recall I'll try to link it below this little anchor mixing container I absolutely love it because all around the cup are the different measurements. I ended up doing this after I learned a very hard lesson. I, when I first started, I poured my fragrance oil into this little plastic, um, and I don't have any around here. I poured it into like a little plastic cup. Now I thought the cup was sturdy and could um, take holding some fragrance oil, but for the length of time that I had it, in that little plastic cup, it began to, I guess, disintegrate. I don't know, it, it, it didn't, the plastic didn't hold up. And I had this 
beautiful fragrance but very strong all over my kitchen table. It was a horrible experience. And after that, I wasn't going to have that experience again. I went ahead and took a dollar and a half out of my purse and bought this at Walmart. So far, we've talked about mixing the grinder, the spatulas, um, the containers that you can use for mixing lye water. Now what I'm going to talk to you about is something very near and dear to my heart because my little girl, my eight-year-old, first introduced me to this idea. Um, and it was the cupcake soaps. As a matter of fact, she was the person that introduced me to baking automatically. I mean, she could literally, at three or four years old, rattle off the ingredients to baking cakes. And so I found that so fascinating. In the meantime, Mama here um, enrolled in the baking courses over, not baking, the cake decorating courses over at Michael's and went through their whole, entire cake decorating um, schooling or training program, I guess you can call it. That was so fun. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I absolutely loved every day of it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm able to take that experience and incorporate it into my soap making business. If you don't have a stand mixer like I have one here, I'll tell you where I purchased this. I got this from the pawn shop and it was hundreds of dollars less than a brand new one. I cannot afford a brand new one. Not right now. Maybe later when I'm producing more and making more, uh, maybe that will be an investment that I take. But for now, this one works perfectly fine. I absolutely love it and it does the job. How do soap makers create the beautiful swirls in their soaps and how do they um, get some of the most beautiful tops on top of their soaps? What are they using and how are they um, creating these beautiful designs? And so what I have here is some of the different tools that you can utilize to come up with your own um, custom designs. not sure if the background is um, going to take away from us. I may have to set something else up. Another tool that you can use to create some of the most beautiful swirls on top of your soaps are chopsticks. And you get two in this packet. <laughs> or chopsticks. And basically you're just using the stick as a tool to design the top of your soap. Chopsticks. Probably one of the easiest tools to find in a home. Clothes hangers. I've seen soap makers take this and bend it in such a way that they're able to put it down inside of the soap and create the butterfly swirls, different hanger swirls they're able to create with these. So this is another tool that you can use. I have several hangers actually and these were donated. You can come across these anywhere. I have one here that's already the, the length and size of my wooden mold and my silicone mold and so it's as easy as just doing the motion to create the butterfly effect and it's that easy. Now this is something that I thought would make an awesome tool and it's bendable you can do anything with it. I bought these from Walmart and they come two in a pack and you could definitely use these as a tool to create the big beautiful interior swirls on the soap. A couple of other tools that you might want to use to create the different types of designs and customizing your soaps are 
spoons and I find myself gathering spoons especially the plastic ones you can use these to create a textured top soap and practice makes perfect so you can get as creative as you want to with all of these different tools I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've seen some soapers use the handle of their spoon but I wouldn't do that what if you need to use your spoon for something I hope this was beneficial to someone if you have any questions or concerns or comments please leave them below I'll try to link to some of the product that I shared with you in the description box please like this video and subscribe to the channel I'll see you guys tomorrow bye